Hey, welcome back. This is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com, and I want to follow up to my last video, which was an intro to EQ, with an intro to compression. Um, these are two components that can cause a lot of confusion, and are pr if you're new to recording, they can be pretty uh, pretty daunting tasks to try to learn. So I want to ease that burden a bit for you and talk about compression. Well, first off, what is compression? Compression is basically, in its simplest form, is just automatic volume control. That's all it is. It's it's like you hire somebody to turn down one specific track whenever you tell them to. And that's pretty much it. If it, you tell them, if it gets a certain to a certain level of loudness, I want you to turn it down. And that's, that's it at its basic level. Now here is the basic uh, compressor that comes with Pro Tools LE. So if you purchase a, an LE system with Pro Tools, these are the basic components. And every compressor you ever see <clears throat> will have most, if not all, of these components. And so we're going to go through and show you each component and how, how to use that, what it does, and how that affects the sound. Now we're on a vocal track here. So you can see the levels are here. Now the first component of a compressor is the threshold. And the threshold is basically the level that if the signal gets above that volume level, you want it to start turning it down. And as you can see, the threshold knob is here. And all the way at the top is zero, and anything below that is going to be a negative in negative dB. And as you can see, this arrow here um, corresponds to that, so it shows the level. So visually, you can hit play. We can see the level is only hitting about right here. So um, anything above this, if we keep the threshold anywhere up here, it's not going to get turned down at all. So we'll hit play here, and uh, let me close this out real quickly. We can start right on the vocal. Okay. So if we hit play here and pull this back, you're going to hear the vocal gets turned down as it comes above this line. What's happening is, as it comes above this line, it gets turned down. And this GR here stands for gain reduction. We're reducing the gain. So as you can see, it came way down to like negative 12. That means we're turning it down 12 dB. It's the same as if we took the fader and pulled it down 12 dB. Now, obviously, that went too low. Um, I guess we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the other components here, um, probably the most second most important is your ratio. And here it's 3 to 1. This is basically, for every dB, that the signal goes above this threshold, this is how many dB it's going to turn it down. So as you can see, this probably went about 4 dB above this threshold, and so this turned it down 12. It's 3 to 1 ratio. Um, and that's kind of how that works. The higher you go with this, the more extreme it's going to turn it down, and we can actually listen to that. I'm going to solo up the vocal, give it a better listen. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. So as we see there, it's turning it way, way down. And this threshold, it's kind of a, a sort of a you play it by ear, but typically you're going to stay between 2 and 4 or 5 or 6 for most things. Anything above that gets to be pretty extreme and usually isn't all that useful. The next thing you have, knee, we won't talk about today. Uh, attack and release. This is the attack is how fast it's going to turn it down. So as soon as it turns goes above that threshold, attack tells us how quickly it goes to turn that down. Release says how quickly it's going to turn it back up to its normal volume. So let's back out of here and get over to the chorus, which is a little louder. Cause in here we go. All right. So here, let's listen to the vocal, and I'm going to tweak these things. Attack and release, usually you can leave alone for most things. The lower the attack, the quicker it compresses. The, s the longer the attack, the more it lets the initial, the initial spike of volume through and then turns down the rest. Uh, we'll listen to that real quick. Cause it might hurt my hands And it might break my feet Kind of made it very flat. And if we do the attack up and give it some, you know, 10 milliseconds or so, the initial punch, you know, punch of that vocal comes through, but then the rest gets compressed. Cause it might hurt my hand. 
So a low attack, it... a low attack is usually only good for some sort of an effect. Uh, the release, some th some things have automatic release control. I don't mess with that too much unless it sounds weird to me in the compressor. Um, so let's go in and listen. I guess the final thing is gain. This is your makeup gain. So if it's turning this thing down 12 dB, we really need to make that back up. Now the point of this is, obviously you can use compression just to turn a signal down if it's just too loud, but typically you're turning it down in the sense of you're trying to get to achieve a sound. You're trying to decrease the dynamic range. So a vocal, for example, I could sing not consistently volume-wise. So some notes you may not be able to hear in the mix, others you may, may be too loud. Compression kind of squashes that vocal, so my lowest notes become a little louder, and my loudest notes become a little quieter, so they're a little more similar. In the course of a mix, that really helps to kind of glue things together. So let's just, I'm going to tinker around with these knobs and sliders and things. Take a listen and just hear what's going on. Cause it might hurt my hands And it might break my feet And it might take my life away from me Cause it might hurt my hands And it might break my feet And it might take my life away from me Okay, this is a good example of what compression does. It, it does lower the loud volumes, but it brings up the quieter volumes. So as you can hear, my breath and the softer things like S's and um, when I said the word from, that F-R at the beginning f became very loud and almost not natural. Let's listen to that again. To, let's listen to that again. Cause it might hurt my hands And it might break my feet Like feet there, the F and the T were very, very loud. And that's part of the byproduct of compression. In this course of a mix, suddenly the vocal was more up front. Now this is over compression. I wouldn't probably compress this much, but just to kind of show you, that's why I've done it. Let's take a listen. Cause it might hurt my hands And it might break my feet and it... Suddenly, there is still a good bit of compression there, but what we're noticing is it's not nearly as dramatic as it sounds soloed. In the course of a mix, those Fs and Ts and those consonants need to be louder so you can understand what I'm saying. So that's kind of a part of what compression is. You'll also notice that the background noise is still quite loud. Cause it might hurt my hands. Right there, you heard that little the hum of my room. That's another drawback from compression. Um, I'm squashing down the dynamic range, so as I bring down you know, the loud parts, I'm turning everything up, as you can see here, with the makeup gain. So it suddenly becomes the quieter parts, the noise of the room becomes louder. So if you compress too much, everything just becomes ridiculously loud. And um, that's obviously not good either. So that's compression in a nutshell uh, on a vocal. You can do this, the same principles apply for bass, guitar, drums. You can put it on drums and kind of glue the whole kit together. And also you can use compression on the entire mix to bring up the overall volume of your mix and kind of tighten up the dynamics. And I'll get into this more in the future, I'm sure, but hopefully this is a good introductory video to kind of get the ball rolling for you and introduce you to what compression is and how it works. If you have any questions, head over to my website, homestudiocorner.com. Leave a comment there. You can ask a question via the Ask Joe form, and uh, hopefully we'll make some progress here. Thanks again for watching. I certainly appreciate it. If you haven't signed up for a newsletter, uh, do that at the website as well, and you'll get a few more tips like this uh, via email. Okay, thanks.